it's 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 the truth. The, it's the thing is, it is, I'm gonna be super honest, right? I love yeah. Dave Chappelle. Don't get me wrong. I I am a huge Dave Chappelle fan. Okay. I think he is probably my favorite comedian overall across time. Like just his his mind blow. Okay. He, but he, for me, he's he's up there because I I just find him. I I do like that he's a bit of an intellectual and he tries to like provoke thought. It's just that mm. he's become more of a of a cultural speaker more so than a comedian. Oh my red. And like to me when I'm watching it, to be honest with you, like he says a lot of things that I already I already see for myself. And like mm. maybe to some people who are not like maybe in tune with or like they're a bit too far left or too far right, he could be eye-opening. But for me, yeah. like, I'm a bit down the middle, like I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I agree. This stuff is ludicrous. And we actually sit back and think about it, it's it's funny. Yeah. But like it's just he's just not hard hitting jokes. It's, he's not like haha funny to me. It's just red. Let's go back to the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Very beginning. Let's go back to the court jester. What was the purpose of the court jester? So the king or the queen would bring in the court jester to make people laugh. Mm -hmm. That is the very beginning of the comedian. And, and the court jester would be in all the kingdoms. So he would come in and just make the king and queen and the royals and all make them laugh. Then as that had advanced and so forth, and people saw how important comedy was, the court jester then evolved into the stand-up comic mm. and the comedian. And then, when, and the winning us okay, it's not coming. Then the first superstar was Richard Pryor. Mm -hmm. Then you then had Eddie Murphy. Then you then had Chris Rock. Then you have George Carlin. And of course, you have Dave Chappelle and so forth. We have to go to the root. If I turn over to see a comedian, I'm there for you to make me laugh. Now you can make some points that are more interesting, but no, you are. Perf have perfected the art of trying to make me laugh. And I think the issue we have with Dave Chappelle is people have gotten a bit confused. We can't have a comedian be the spokesperson for morality, social justice, and so forth. Now, I'm saying that. I'm not saying that you, as a human being, don't have the right. Every human being, whether you're a um, comedian, whether you are a gymnast or whatever, every human being has the right to speak their mind. Sports has, you have the right to speak their mind, but you are a comedian. Mm. And the issue that we have here is, it goes back to my issue with celebrity. All because you're popular doesn't mean that what you say holds more weight than someone who is much more educated, but is less popular than you. Spot on. So what you have with Dave Chappelle is, because people love him so much, because he's so popular and so much, people now feel that anything he says is right. And here's the thing. I don't blame Dave Chappelle. Imagine you put yourself in Dave Chappelle's shoes. Everyone loves you. People hang on your every word. Everything you say, people say, oh, that's right. Oh, that's true. Oh, that's genius. But this is the issue. Dave Chappelle, people are coming into you as a comedian. Mm. And they love you as a comedian. So everything you say, people won't even push back on it because they like you so much. It's like that's really popular friend in school. Because you like him so much, you laugh at everything he says and you agree with everything he says. Even if it may be wrong, be like, well, I like him so much, it must be right. Red, I'll be real with you. And this is why I first saw it. When Dave Chappelle um, didn't have, um, when he grew muscles, mm -hmm. And its particular aspect of his comedy was lost. Because what was so funny about Dave Chappelle, even before he said anything, look at him. He laughed. And my thing is, I see, Red, this one I want to ask you now. Mm. What is the purpose of a stand-up comedian? Is it to sort of give you insight or to make you laugh out loud? My thing is that the first order of a comedian is to make you laugh out loud. The second, laugh out loud. Third, laugh out loud. Fourth, oh, give me some insights. Mm. I'm gonna give you my opinion, Sean. This because like the thing is, is what makes it what, what's funny to us is based off our relatability, mm. right? Like when you laugh at a meme, sometimes when you see it, you're like, oh, that's so true. That's me. Yeah, I yeah, do yeah. that. You know what I mean? Like that's like you have to always relate to comedy. Like that's why like certain comedy you'll find it just completely unfunny. Let's say for example, I find Louis C.K. funny. Some people find him not funny at all. They just be like, I don't relate. I, I just mm. don't. I don't see that that appeal. It's just too far. I'm pretty sure you think Louis C.K. is funny. Not my kind of comedy. Exactly, right? So, like, it's not that he's not funny. It's, it's very relative. It's based on relatability. Yeah. Now, where I think Dave Chappelle, what his problem is, is he got so big, HH, that he's trying to cater to the masses. 
right? And mm-hmm. the bigger your audience is, the less funny you become because you're you're trying to be funny to the lowest common denominator. Mm-hmm. Like Peak Chappelle was Peak Chappelle because he was talking about what he grew up with, like his life story. Like yeah. the game, I remember had this qu- sick quote about how he says like every rapper's first album is always the best album because he had mm-hmm. like their whole life leading up to it. And it's mm-hmm. their whole life put into that album, right? Yeah. So Dave Chappelle, his first early comedy specials were the best because that was his life material he was putting into it. Yeah. And now he's just trying to pull stuff out of society, out of culture. And he used the same format jokes where, because Dave Chappelle is incredibly witty. Like Dave yeah, and, and, the, and he's a very good storyteller. He knows how to exactly. formulate a story and so forth. He that sets up a punchline and he goes through a story and then he comes back to that punchline. He's very witty. He's very smart. The only mm-hmm. problem is, is like a lot of the topics that he's talking about have just become like just overall worldwide issues, which it becomes less funny because he's no longer catering to his audience, which is like yeah. what made him big. He's catering to kids that are 18, 19, who never heard of Dave Chappelle. He's catering to old people that have never heard of Dave Chappelle. He's, he's become, and that's the problem. It's like where, why I, I personally find him less funny because I'm like, this isn't your original material. Like this is, no, this isn't like the, that, that what you used to really talk about, but it's not on me to decide what he can and can't talk about. Obviously he's entitled to do it. Like I won't ever like hate on him. I will always respect his body yeah. of work. Um, but what, 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 what I think the problem is with comedians nowadays, HH, is that if you notice society as a whole, they've yeah. sort of evolved comedians from just being a core gesture, somebody who just makes you laugh, and they take them way more seriously. Like every comedian has a podcast now yeah. where they start talking about life and complaining and stuff like that. Like all of them, all of them. And I'm not saying like, no, no, but, 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 no, here's the key thing mm-hmm. because this, this, this is where it now gets interesting because people will say that, oh, you are being insulting to a comedian by saying, yo, just make, make me laugh. I don't want anything mm-hmm. else from you. But it's like, oh, no, but. I should once point, and my thing, that's why I said that every human being has the right to give their thoughts process, but let's keep it real. Hashtag honesty. Mm-hmm. You're a comedian. I'm not coming to you for insights, thoughts provoking stuff, because that's not your cachet. That's not what you, because for instance, I use the example of Mal- Mal- Malcolm X. Ev- the first thing you heard of Malcolm X, he's trying to say, tell you something about society. He's trying to tell you something about stuff. The Political first thing you hear of yeah, the first time you hear of comedian, he's trying to make you laugh. So, he, he, Dave Chappelle, why do people even care about what you you say? Do people care about what you say because of how insightful you you you, you were? No, they care about what you say because you you make people laugh, mm. and people love people that make you laugh. Like one of the things that women love is, hey, he makes me laugh. Humor, so, humor is is is, is, is the humor is the um common de- 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 denominator amongst human beings. That's, that's the icebreaker. So, so Dave Shepard, here's the thing. So, do people really actually agree with what you're saying? Or is it fake? Because they like you so much, because you make you made them laugh so much, they're like, hey, I want to be on you, but is it actual, is it actual real agreement to the H-H- kind of points that, that you're making? We know what I think is the problem, HH, is that it's not that if, you ha- if you're good at one thing, you can only stick to one thing. Like, mm. You're a great, you're a great football analyst. You like to talk about football. You're very entertaining in that aspect. Doesn't mean mm. that you only have to stick to that. You could go into movies. You can go into like like cultural speak. The problem with a comedian is that you have a certain aura, right? If I'm looking at you and I laugh, and then all of a sudden you come on a podcast and you start talking serious and stuff like that, it kills the vibe. You know what I mean? It's contradictory. Like LeBron James can play basketball, right? But he can talk politics because talking politics doesn't go against what he does. Man, you know right, no, I mean? no, right. Do you know how funny it was? It's like, it's like if you entered in my head, I mm-hmm. literally was thinking of that example of LeBron and thingy because people could say, Oh, if you see the shut up and dribble, the shut up and dribble, that's the comment. Yeah. Because we say, Okay, if you're saying a comedian can say and uh, talk about serious stuff, what about a basketball player? But here's the thing mm-hmm. just as you, as you said, what is our in for the basketball player? He plays basketball, he's not said anything, he is doing something that not, does not require any words, he's just playing basketball. But for the comedian, a guy that your in on him is that he makes you laugh. It is too extreme a departure to go from making me laugh to now. This thing about these people getting killed and these LGBTQ guys are like, oh, okay. Like, like, but that's a... a guy that plays a sport or so forth then says, okay, this is my views on sports. You're like, okay, let's see what it says because he's not said anything yet. Because it's it's not it is not too much of a departure of the football player now talking politics than the comedian and the court jester now talking politics. Because again, right, let's go back to the very beginning. Mm-hmm. The the court jester. Imagine the court jester now says, So kings and queens, 
this is my view on this kingdom and so forth and why I think the political off with That's his head. I... Who are you to tell me? <laughs> off with his head. Wait, 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 mate. What? Who are you? No, like. <laughs> He, he, that's the thing is, is like like but it's not just dave Chappelle. like look at all the news shows nowadays like john oliver like trevor noah mm. like uh, like all these late night shows they all have like uh comedians they're all comedians mm. like they sort of want to mix the two and like it is funny because the thing is i i blame this on donald trump right mm. i feel like donald trump in 2016 he broke culture because for the first time like we always used to make fun of like presidents and like how them being dumb. Like like for example, George Bush was a prime example. He there was a lot oh, yeah. of jokes cracked on George yeah, Bush. Yeah. Uh, for those people that remember his era, but like Donald Trump literally made the presidency a meme, right? Yeah. So you had like CNN and all these guys like they couldn't even hold a straight face. Like Fox News are just like out here capping, just like like it, it's comedy. It was all just it writes itself. Like you didn't even have to be a comedian to ma write material about this because it was just such a joke. Mm. And he sort of blurred the line and sort of like merged the two, like entertainment, politics, uh, comedy, all of them just became like just this one big great blob. And mm. and the problem is, is that now, now you have like comedians, like I said, like they don't cater to almost to the, to the audience that really follows them anymore. They're trying to cater to the internet, to the whole world. Like yeah, the problem and, is, and is that, that, that because I think because everyone now wants to try, I mean, I think it's the issue with popularity. But let's just even. No, but I just have one quote. Just to round off my point. Like it's just, the problem is with that. With that. That catering is is that people always complain about cancel culture. Cancel culture has always existed. The problem is now is that when before you were, let's say for example you're doing a comedy special to Americans. Yeah. Now this special is being on Netflix and it goes worldwide. Yeah. And what's funny to Americans might not be funny to let's say Africans or Europeans or Asians. Mm. And then there becomes a problem. These and now this sect on Twitter is going to be loud. And like you have this guy who's let's say in Taiwan that's tweeting saying like. No, this shouldn't exist. Like, like you know, I'm using just hypothetical experience, like yeah. examples. But when you're when you're caring to a huge audience, there's more risk of of people getting offended or not being funny or that. And and and, and it's just again, it becomes less relatable because it's all mm -hmm. about relatability. And at the end of the day.